The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the June 15th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes... I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, hey, we've got you covered there, too. You can always let those fingers do the walking. That means go ahead, send me an email. Send it to Steve at tfnn.com. And if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question in that uh, subject, then that would be really great. Of course, if you're in our Tiger's Den, well, we'll take any ping. Private pings are are preferred only because I can more easily keep track of your request out there. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to La Show. Right now, all the U.S. indices that we track trading the upside, Dow's up 120. That's about four tenths per cent. Eight tenths for the S&P are 29 points. One and four tenths for the NASDAQ 100, 158 points. Russell's up 17. Some is up 20. Tranny's up 163. Gold's up seven bucks. Silver's up 49 cents. The only one not joining the party is Light Sweet Crude. She's back two dollars and 47 cents, trading at 116.46. Did generate a top, did generate a topping pattern uh, yesterday that uh, would likely send price back to the bottom of a its profile out there. That's the support level. Natural gas up 34 pennies, trading out at 753, and the 30 Treasury up 25 ticks. 132.04 is the print there. <laughs> Lead the charge dollar wise to the upside. You got Google up 42 bucks. Mercado Libre up 39. Uh, Argenix uh, is up uh, 22. Tesla's up 19. Uh, uh, Avis Budget Group uh, is up 17. That's 10%. That's a big move out there. To the downside, it's Charter Communications, only off 8 bucks. Alby Morrow. Down seven bucks, three percent. Westlake Corp off six or six percent. Olin Corp down five, and Laredo Petroleum is off about uh, four dollars and sixty cents out there. We've got a request to take a look at ticker symbol NET. We'll do that uh, in a, a few, uh, Joey. I'll try to remember that. Uh, but first, let's go take a look at the equity futures. Let's go. Let's try to step through this. Let's uh, focus on the equity futures if we can at this stage here. We'll change screens and uh, just try to see what we're looking for. Uh, what I'd like to do. Well, first, I want to answer any of your questions. So we'll certainly get to uh, Joey's out there. But uh, what I want to do is, uh, you know, the real action is going to take place during uh, David and Tom's show out there. Uh, because uh, now we may see markets pull back, tighten up just a tad as we come into that 2 o'clock Fed announcement. Then we'll see an initial reaction. Then we've got 2.30. We've got Powell on. He's usually on for about an hour. Q&A out there. And that's where the real action can take place. And then, of course, of course, there's this evening and tomorrow for us to uh, see how the market really interprets it. But what you and I are going to do right now is just take a look at the ES Mini as an example and look to see if we can find any type of uh, tells. Is there something ahead of time that's telling us the way that the market is going to respond? So if we take a look at the daily time frame chart out here, the answer is no. There's not anything in the daily chart that suggests at this stage here that we've got a bottom. What it needs is a bullish reversal candle to do that. That would then confirm an A to B equals CD to the downside. So short of a bullish reversal candle, the daily chart is saying, I want lower price. All right, so that's one piece of it. We go down into the details and see, well, what are the details showing us? What are the 
intraday charts. And again, here we go to a five-hour time frame chart. For the ES Mini, the five-hour time frame chart generated a TD nine count bottom. It did it yesterday at uh, or last evening. It did it no two days. June 13th, yeah. June 13th was the uh, TD9 count bottom that formed out there. That is still held. Price is just trading with inside its profile. So the resistance level where the sellers are lined up on a five-hour time frame is up at the 38.39. They're taking a nap until price gets up to that level. The buyers, well, the buyers at this stage here are really at the 37.56 level. So that's a five-hour chart. What is it signaling to us? No breakout or anything. So with just a bottom forming and just trading with inside the uh, profile itself, mm, just just uh, could be just working off an oversold condition. So I don't think we have a ton of information there. Let's go down to our next time frame. The next time frame here is the two-hour time frame, 120 minutes. And here, this is a beautiful set of charts. Why? Because we've got wave number seven. That's letter G. That's a very small portion of the Chapman wave out there. We have a Rhodes Mintum indicator uh, pattern as well. And all of that led to what? Led to move up to where sellers were at. So here you get to see that. I'll just expand this out just a tad more for you. The, well, that didn't do a whole lot. But the sellers are located where? You and I know it's a, it's a competitive advantage, you know, and it's a it's a good thing to have, isn't it? It's not a figure that Stevie would have pulled out of his, you, you know what? It's where the buyers and sellers are telling you they reside for this specific time frame. So on a two-hour time frame chart, price gets up to 37.87. That's where the sellers are at. There's a TD9 count uh, that uh, formed out there. So now on a retracement. Even if it's not a retracement into 2 o'clock, an initial reaction uh, to the uh, Fed's announcement might see price at least spike that 37, 39, 50 level. So here we've got a really good set of data, both a good bottom, solid bottom, take us up to a solid top out there or resistance levels. And so now we can say that if we do see a close above 37.87 on a two-hour time frame, that's going to suggest that price is going to move up to the 38.78 level. That's how I would read it. On a knee-jerk reaction, first reaction, the first few minutes or what have you of <coughs> after the uh, Fed announcement out there, we could look for price, and we should look for price to pull back into the anywhere between 37.28, 37.38, and 37.48. That's coming from the two-hour chart. So the two-hour chart has given us a, a great deal of information. Do we have similar information on a 60-minute chart? The answer is uh, no, we do not. I can't really say no, we do not. Yes, we do. You've got nice wave number seven, rose momentum indicator bottom. Price also ran into resistance at the top of a profile 37.98 out there. Uh, so price might be pulling back to its oscillator and change line on a 60-minute basis. That, that's at 37.58 out here. So still got the bottom, but nothing that's been able to take out resistance. 30-minute chart, resistance for it, and it has not failed. It's going to be that uh, TD9 count breakdown level, and that's at the 38.04 area. So you got 38.04 to watch the upside. 38.39, though, that still is, uh, what did I say, 38... 3804. Okay, and we got 3839 and we've got 3787. So here's here's how I would take a look at it. If we get above 3787, price will go to that 3804 level. If you can clear 3804, you're off to 3839 and if you can clear 3839, then it is off to the races. Now those races, by the way, should take us just up to that red daily oscillator and change line for the ES mini. And that becomes kind of your final upside target at this stage and that's printing right now at about 38.93 steve rhodes with tfnn we get back for this break we're going to go take a look at an instrument that joey wanted us to look at although i don't remember the name but i'll figure it out oh it was net net of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, diverse partner, 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go take a look at Tricker Soma NET. What we know about NET right now is it is trading below last year's low. That's never a good sign out there. Now, if we take a look at the monthly chart, the monthly chart uh, topped with a TD9 count top. Price is uh, crushed, crushed the first breakout level of 64.84. So longer term, what the monthly chart is communicating to you and I, Joey, is that it wants to go target 15.05. If we take a look at the weekly chart out here, the weekly chart says, well, I may have a pit stop. And that pit stop or that bottom, which is a TD9 count, uh, should form between this week and next week. So it could be this week. Now, the last time we saw a weekly TD9 count bottom was right as price was coming back to their breakout level of support. And that's the preferred way that you'd like to see this, Joey. And that was on the trading week of January 28th. Of course, that did find a uh, bottom out here. And then price uh, bounced higher and then began to move lower out here. And that has what led us to week number nine of the TD9 count series. Now, the week is not over. Price still has to close below the close of bar number five. Seems like a likely outcome, but you never know. It's only Wednesday. So we should get a completed TD9 count bottom between this week and next. So that says, okay, the daily chart should be the one that would tell us when that is likely to occur. Well, turns out that the daily chart has formed bar number eight. In order to form bar number nine, and it's a likely outcome today, price just simply needs to close below 51.60. We're trading at 42.46. You've got wave number seven. That's letter G. That's another potential bottoming pattern. And you've got a Rhodes momentum indicator signal trigger. It needs a bullish reversal candle. So if you're looking to take a trade in this, then you're getting decent signals. Not from the monthly. We're just now looking at the weekly and the uh, daily time frame. As far as where price would or could or should bounce to, because this is below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile, your price target on a move higher is really going to be 55 bucks even, Steven. No speeding. You go over 55, well, if you go over 55 here, they things will speed up and get to 59.88. But more likely than not, 55 bucks would be your reward, your target on a further move higher. As far as the intraday charts out here, let's see if there's anything that's worthwhile for us to pay attention to and take a look at. And nothing that I really see of any kind of significance. So that's the deal 
when we take a look at net out there. So uh, best of luck to you. There was a quest, I believe, to take a look at Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble is getting the schnot kicked out of it today or so. It's really been for quite a while for the last many weeks out here. Let's go take a look at the black background charts first. We'll see the A to B equals CD pattern that is in play. That's coming from the daily time frame. So let's just simply take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern. The B point out here was a hammer candle that formed on May the 20th. This is the daily time frame that we're looking at. That low was 139.18, and there was volume of about 7.7 .7 million shares. Now, when that was passed, Yesterday is with 9.9 .9 million shares. So we have a confirmed A to B equals CD. Now, when you take a look at that B to C leg, the retracement was about a 0.382. It was 38.14 to be exact out there. That is a very shallow B to C retracement. That says even though the one-to-one -one price projection is 123.27, I doubt it. More likely than not, what Procter & Gamble will do is fulfill a larger than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, whether it does or it doesn't, I mean, that's that's what I would be anticipating. The second thing I anticipate as well, when we see a bullish reversal candle, as price, approach, as price approaches 123.27, we'll let the market communicate to us. But more likely than not, I'd say the 116 area is where Procter & Gamble is headed to. Price below the bottom of its weekly, below the bottom of its uh, monthly profiles out there. So let's go see if on the white background charts there's additional information that you and I can glean from its charts. When we take a look at the monthly chart, we'll shoot. Price is sitting right at support. So if the A to B equals CD pattern that you and I just looked at in a daily time frame is going to come to fruition, we need to see a close below 131.94. We're trading at 131.53. It's a monthly chart. It's only the 15th out there. The price is sitting at potential support. Turns out when we take a look at the weekly chart, we don't see any kind of potential support. All that suggests to us is a move back to the 116 level. 116 happens to be that 1 to 1.272 daily a to B equals CD pattern that you and I took a look at. The uh, daily time frame shows that we are in bar number six, so no bottom signal there at this stage. So uh, what else do we see here? Not a lot of good news. We take a look at Procter & Gamble, and not that it can't bounce, but the bigger picture is, or appears to be, and primarily because of yesterday's price action, is that Procter & Gamble wants to move lower. So I hope that helps you out, uh, PG, uh, uh, PG. Uh, G7, uh, maybe that was along your line of thinking as well. There was a request from uh, uh, Zakuda inside our Tiger's Den. Can we possibly take a look at Apple? Absolutely, APL. And Apple having just a little bit of a counter trend move as we speak right now. Uh, this will take just a few moments here for the uh, charts to uh, populate. Monthly basis, which got a nice TD9 count top up there, suggests that over time price wants to make its way to 123.13. You're below the bottom of its bullish structured monthly profile. That's the breakout level, 123.13. Now, Apple on a weekly basis could form a TD9 count. However, if it's going to form a TD9 count, you can't get much more rally out of Apple. Now, is not that's, that's, is that not beautiful language out there? It is beautiful. It goes rise, the cream rises to the top with regard to Stevie's grammar, right? But here's the deal. If we take a look at, uh, that almost sounded like Joe Biden, didn't I? Here's the deal. But I'm not angry. That's a different thing. But if we take a look at, this is bar number nine. It is below all of the other bars, which it needs to, bar eight, nine, the bar following nine out there. And, but, oops, that, wow, how about that? That's a fast forward. That was fast reverse. But in order for bar number nine to actually complete, and bar number nine must complete, otherwise the pattern gets negated, price has to close Friday below 137.59. And we're at 133 right now. That is not much of a rally inside. So if you're expecting a big blast off rally, which we may get, and you're hoping to get a, a nice TD9 count on the weekly base for Apple, well, actually, what you're looking for is more likely sideways movement than anything else. So on a weekly basis, and the oscillator and change line on Apple has changed color. So if we do get that bottom, what price and the oscillator and change line should do is catch up to each other. Currently, the oscillator and change line in the 152.41 area. The daily time frame chart, no bottom. No bottom signal, no bottom pattern, no nothing. Zero, zilch, nada. Um, now, there is an A to B equal CD pattern is out there. And if we were to get a bullish reversal candle, then okay. Apple's counter trend level, if it's only a counter trend move, if it's a solid bottom, then uh, close your ears. You won't want to listen to this. But if it's just a counter trend move, so where price should find resistance and where it should uh, stall out on a rally is at 139.47. You mean exactly 139.47, Steve-O? 
Yeah, I mean exactly 139.47. Now, I don't know if it's going to get to 148 or 146, or what, but that is the center of its bullish structure daily profile, and that is where any kind of counter-tread move would typically stall. With regard to the intraday charts out here, you know, we show some bottoming signals, um, but uh, nothing here, no levels of resistance of any significance that have been taken out. So is Apple giving us a clue? Well, I'd say those that want to be long, and you'd sure like Apple to be the leader out there, you'd really like this to have a weekly TD9 count bottom. If that's the case, you don't want to see a rally of more than $3. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Right now, we've got the Dow. She's trading up 161 points. The S&P 35, the NASDAQ 100, 183. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so Dan, the man, Levitan, writes in and he says, Stevo. Can we take a look at Walmart uh, looking for the TD9 counts, uh, any test of a recent low? Is this an A to B equal CD to the downside? And that's Dan in New York City. Hey, Dan, there's no A to B equal CD to the downside just yet. If, if that does form, and that would be a close below the uh, low from a few weeks back at 111.27, uh, then it's going to be curtains for Walmart. When I say curtains, I mean the kind of curtains you can buy at 86.40, maybe even 74.57. So, But we don't have a confirmed A to B equals CD downside yet. So let's take a look at the white background charts out here, see what they're communicating to us. Well, first, we take a look at the monthly chart. You have a confirmed roads momentum indicator top out here. That says that price is likely going to head to 111.80. 
or at least that's its next stop on the uh, downside action. That is its breakout level. If we take a look at the weekly chart, well, the weekly chart shows the TD9 count top. I've got wave number seven as well. And we can see that a few weeks ago, price just crushed its breakout level. That would be the A point out there. It would be the high from the uh, week of April 22nd and low. Again, is that the low from May 20th? That's the low that's got to be taken out, whether it's a daily or it's a weekly chart, in order to get your A to B equals CD pattern. That's how it came up with that uh, 86 or 74 level out there. So we don't have that. We don't have any kind of bottoming signal. You're only in bar number seven on the uh, monthly time frame out here when it comes to Walmart. The daily time frame says I'm ready for a little bit of a bounce. Why does it say that? Well, or it could say that. Bar number nine of a TD9 count is going to form today as long as price closes below 121.02. You're at 118.92. So odds favor, that's a likely outcome. Price is also stretched. You've got the Rosemont indicator signal. So if you were to get and you're inside a, a bullish structure, now you're below the bottom of its daily profile out there at 120.56. So you don't see a center line. The center and the bottom are at the same price. So that's strong support or should have been, but price isn't above strong support. It's below it. So now that's strong resistance, 120.56. But you are going to go, or appears you'll get a TD9 count. If you get a bullish reversal candle, not necessarily today, but tomorrow, you would get a uh, confirmed roads momentum indicator top. So to the extent, Dan, that you want to trade Walmart, wait for that confirming signal. So wait for today's action to play out. And then what you would do is your stop would be somewhere between 127.13, the top of that daily profile, and the high from May 31st which is out at the 129.60 level out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at the daily, the weekly, and the monthly charts for Apple. Not a whole lot here on the intraday of significance for you and I to take a look at. So, Dan, thanks so much for taking the time to write in, and um, best of luck to you as far as what you do with that information. I don't believe there's any other requests inside of the Tiger's Den. So let's go switch back. Let's do a little bit of, uh, let's switch over. So we took like the ES Mini. We can take a look at the other future contracts out there, the equity future contract. But let's not do that. There's other instruments that people probably have interest in. Gold would be one of them, most likely. So let's go take a look at the August contract here for gold. We had a nice rally earlier in the day. All that did was took price up to its daily oscillator and change line. We'll see that momentarily. Well, you can see it right now. Let's just simply expand out the daily chart. So what we know, now my white background charts have a different set of profiles than the black background charts. Which one's correct? They're both correct. Right now what we know is uh, support is held on the black background charts out there. But resistance is held no matter what color chart we have. And that resistance is that red oscillator and change line. And that's currently printed at 1831.80. You need to see it close above that. If you see it close above that, then that's going to signal move back to the top of its profile, 1879. You don't think that these profiles really tell us where buyers and sellers exist? Just look at the daily chart for gold. Take a look at that gigantic move a couple of days ago. Where did price stop? Right at, right at the top of that profile level. So they're very helpful. So right now with regard to Goldilocks, we're not seeing a breakout message. Not that we can't. But remember, if it's a breakout message, it's really just a consolidation with resistance being at that 1879. Now we clear 1879, and then we're on to something out there. The five-hour chart has a nice TD9 count bottom. What did price do? Ran right up into resistance, where the sellers were at at 1838.50. Got to love it. Or you don't have to love it. Now price is pulling back. The question is, will 1816.50 hold as support? That is the bottom of its five-hour bullish structured profile. If we look at the 120-minute time frame chart, I don't know what we have out here, so we've got to expand it out. What do we have? Not much. Yeah, I don't see anything down here. Oh, we got a TD9 count top. Excuse me. So we got a nice TD9 count top. Price is pulling back to support. That support level is the bottom of its profile at 1818.50. We're at 1819 as we speak right now. But price can pull back further, test that red oscillator and change line at 1816.70. But it closed below that. It says we're headed to 1808.40. So you got bottom signal here on the 120. So far, the retracement, no, no, no big deal. Nice bottoming signal on the five hour price running resistance pull back right now. Not necessarily a big deal, but a concern of caution and more more caution if we see a close below the bottom of that profile, which again is at the 181650 level. As I look at the other intraday charts, the 30 minute chart formed a TD9 count top. 
did that earlier. So, boy, as price was hitting that resistance level, and we took a look at it on the five-hour chart, we had all kinds of topping patterns going on. So at 9 o'clock this morning, we had a nice TD9 count. We had a wave number 7, that's letter G, so you got those two topping signals out there. And now what we have is a TD9 count bottom at 135. And as we come into 2 p.m., if we're looking for a signal, I guess it's coming from the 30-minute chart because that's going to complete the TD9 count bottom pattern. And that says that gold should at least have a knee-jerk reaction and rally up into about 1824 out there. If it gets above 1824, then we're looking for a move to about the 1835 level and above that, back to the highs of the day. And perhaps it's actually on a 30-minute basis, an A to B equals CD to the upside out there. So the 30-minute is really right on time for the Fed meeting and is saying, okay, the retracement for the day is over. Now, if price closes below the low of this session, Right now, the low of this session is 1817.60. So if we close below 1817.60, I'm assuming we're not going to move lower here in the next 24 minutes, but that, that could be a long shot out there. So check the low uh, that we have that, that takes place during this half hour out here. Uh, and if we do get a, a close below that, then they will have a TD9 count failure, and that's going to suggest to move back to 1808.80. So that's a fairly decent tell, or I think it's a decent tell so far. Let's move from gold and take a look at uh, Lightspeed Crude. Now, in Crude's case, let's go take a look at its August contract out here. So let's move up to the August contract and see what kind of signals we have here. So the daily signal, <coughs> excuse me, yesterday, what this did was it uh, completed a Rhodesmentum indicator top. It completed wave number seven, and now price is trading with inside its profile. The support level for the August contract is at 113.66. So if we see Lightspeed Crew below 113.66, it's going to go target its breakout level of 105.94. Seems like a likely outcome out here, but price first has got to close below that 113.66 level. The five-hour chart, which also has a Roachman <laughs> indicator top, suggests that price should go target 113.36. That's because price is below its current profile level. So we've got 113.36. Is that it? Let me pull this over. I'm sorry, we have 111.36 and 105.94 as downside price targets. How about the two-hour chart? What do we have out here for light sweet crude? We don't have anything to suggest otherwise, meaning that, yeah, this is suggesting it wants lower price as well. No bottoming pattern out here in, in play. The 60-minute chart, I don't see a bottoming pattern. I see a uh, TD9 count bottom failing. So that suggests lower price. The 30-minute chart is trying to form a bottom, as is the 15, as is the 10 out there. But those bigger pictures, the daily, the five-hour, and the two-hour chart, are really suggesting the light speed crude should head lower, with the 111 to 105 area being the target for the downside. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the chart for CRISPR. CRISPR therapeutics out there, you know, the guys that believe they're God and can uh, just go ahead and modify our uh, DNA. They do have a cool technology out there, that is for sure. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, what uh, CRISPR did was it uh, completed a TD9 count bottom right above its breakout level of 46.84. That's after creating that TD9 count top out there. I think maybe it's worthwhile to learn this pattern. I just kind of throw that out there as something to think about. So now what we've got is a nice valid bottom on the monthly chart. What price should do is price should make its way G7 up to the oscillator and change line, which is really near the bottom of its profile. So we're going to call it 88.62. It's a likely longer term move. Do we have a confirmation on the weekly chart? Because that's what we like to see when we have a monthly bottom. Well, it turns out we do. We've got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom that formed out here the week of uh, May 13th. Price is pulling back. It's back inside its profile. Just needs a close on a weekly basis above 64.82 to then suggest that price wants to go target the 122 level. The daily time frame for CRISPR formed a TD9 count top. And what that's done is that's taken price right back to, right back to its breakout level. 54.49, G7, would you have picked that out as a breakout level? Would anybody here at TFNN, anybody in the Tiger's Den, anybody, any contributor have chosen 54.49 as a breakout level? My answer is no. There's no one who would have taught us that, that 54.49 would have been the breakout level for CRISPR. And that's another value of the TD9 counts. So you've got the valid TD9 count. We don't have a bottom pattern, but pulling back to the breakout level can be a bottom pattern. Oh, Stevie, would you get your language correct there? What I'm saying is we don't have the type of bottoming pattern that you and I look for, TD9 count, Rhodes momentum indicator, completed A to B equals CD. But you can bottom by just simply pulling back to the breakout level. And that, in essence, what CRISPR has done. Now, CRISPR gets stronger if it can close above its daily green oscillator and change line. Green tells us the price oscillator is above zero. A bullish condition is a rising price oscillator above zero. What CRISPR really needs to do is not just cross that Rubicon. It needs to close above 64.13, the, the center of its bullish structure daily profile. G7, if it can close above 64.13, you're headed back to at least test that TD9 count top swing point out there. Do we have anything else that's of uh, assistance for us? You can see a nice uh, bottom out here on the 130-minute chart. Uh, so I don't really see anything else out there. But you got a bottom on the monthly, a bottom on the weekly. You've got a you had a bottom on the uh, daily, but really more so right now we're looking at the top that is pulled right back to its breakout level. And as long as 54.49 holds, CRISPR should head higher. 
The next request was to take a look at uh, ticker symbol K-I-N-D. That is next door out holding. So we're going to get the uh, white background charts populated. What I can share with you right now is prices trading, consolidating between its daily and its weekly profiles. That range is between 286 to 370 on the daily, 281 to 381 on the weekly chart out there. Now, not enough data in time has elapsed to generate any kind of monthly signals. But on the weekly basis, what we have out here is what? We have a t we have a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom that was formed with the hammer candle back on May the 27th. So what you've got to do is get a close above that 381. I think it was was it 381? It was 381. The top of that weekly profile. To then say you've got to move up to 583. But do you have a bottom on the uh, weekly? If that was the question, the answer is yes. How about a bottom on the daily? The answer is yes. Very much like the uh, CRISPR that we looked at on a daily basis. Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom creates a TD9 count top. Pulls back to support. That was the bottom of its profile. So it's uh, completed the uh, move. This should move higher. The 195-minute chart has a TD9 count as well. Price pulled right back to its breakout level of support of 296. You've got a 130-minute TD9 count bottom. So we may not be able to find good tells, folks, on the ES, the NQ, and maybe a few other instruments. But KIND has got all the tells in the world out here. And not that it can't head lower, but this is suggesting that it wants to head higher. So hope that's kind information to those of you out there that are listening. There was also a question to take a look at Boeing out here. BA is a ticker symbol. Let's go ahead and let that get populated. You're welcome, Duff, um, if you were the one that requested that. And even if you weren't the one that requested that, kind of want to make some money. I think kind is a place for you to uh, take a look at for sure. Boeing on a, a monthly basis, if the, it forms, a, and this is completed a TD9 count bottom. It did it last uh, month. It's also got a Roach Mintum indicator signal. You like to have two. Boy, you'd love to see a bullish reversal candle on a monthly basis. But that's just going to take us to 170.55 or so, the red oscillator and change line. The uh, weekly time frame, do we have a lower low? that We do. Oh, it doesn't matter. So on a weekly basis, the bottoming pattern would have to be the A to B equals CD pattern. It looks to me like it completed that. So you've got a valid bottoming pattern. The uh, weekly red oscillator and change line, whoever asks, is clearly key resistance out there. And that's at about 139.66 or so. So on any move upside, you want to watch how price handles that number. Uh, today is a gap to the upside. That gap to the upside is confirming that Rhodes Mintum indicator signal from yesterday. So you've got a nice uh, bottom. You actually, you sort of have an island bottom out here. I would prefer it not to be that island bottom I'm referring to, not to be in this congestion zone from back on May 23rd. But nonetheless, you've got a confirmed bottom. Uh, counter trend move would end at 137.65. It's more than a counter trend move. You've got sellers still to deal with at 142.21. You clear 142.21, and you're headed up to 189.85. Lots of laughs. Yes, looks good, Duffy. Boeing 170 would be a big move. Yeah, it would be a big move. Uh, but right before it does that, it's got to deal with some uh, some uh, selling activity between 136 and 142, at least on the daily time frame charts out here. Intraday, not a ton of additional information out there. 30-minute does have a TD9 count top, and that suggests price could easily pull back to 127.55. That would be normal and natural. There was one other request. What was it? Uh, what was XOM, Exxon Mobil out here. So let's go take a look at Exxon Mobil. They got a, 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 a love, I believe they got a love note from uh, President Joe, didn't they? Oh, oh, I won't say it. But boy, I'd sure like to say it. Um, so let's just wait here for the chart for Exxon Mobil. Now, Exxon Mobil, on a monthly basis, confirmed a TD9 count top. This will complete the pattern this week, no matter where it closes at. And that suggests that over time, what Exxon Mobil may want to do is pull back to 74.39. On a weekly basis, right now we've got a... Uh, a bear separating candle. That's confirming a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. And that suggests if price closes below 96.13, then what we're looking at is move to 89.98, 83.88, or 79.30. TD9 count and Rhodes Mintum indicator top on the daily. Right now, price is trading below 95.30. And that's the key level to watch. Why? Because that's its breakout level. If you close below that, you typically gravitate to the next breakout level, which in the case of ExxonMobil would be 86.35. So that's your daily, your weekly, and your monthly ExxonMobil charts out there. On the other intraday charts, I don't really see anything here to suggest that price is not going to continue to move lower. 
So I think we looked at light sweet crude. I know we did. And that suggested price moving lower. And ExxonMobil at this stage here is suggesting that it wants to move lower as well. So I do hope that helps, John. I believe we got through... Um, I believe we got through all of the requests out there. Let me just check the phone for the emails real quickly, see if there's anything else. There's nothing else. So uh, we're about to go to a breakout here in about five seconds. Uh, I'll spend a little time surfing around, see if there's any other charts with any other tells out there. But the real action, that begins in about, uh, about 10 minutes time. 10 minutes and uh, 20 seconds to be exact. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, daily chart here for Lockheed Martin LMT as a ticker symbol. There was a request to take a look at it during the breakout here. What I see is a consolidation that is likely forming. I say likely because of the swing point that price is dealing with right now, G7, is the day of March 16th. 5.8 million shares, you're 531,000 shares. So doesn't seem likely it'll break through here. It can, obviously. And there is a valid topping pattern, both on the daily and the weekly chart out there. But right now, looks more like just a consolidation pattern than anything else. As to two different tells, uh, the only other tells or signals that we have 
We talked about this yesterday. The New York Stock Exchange Advanced Client Oscillator got down to that minus 250 level. That is an oversold condition. So that needs to work itself off. It doesn't have to work itself off today, but it's begun that process. So we shouldn't be surprised to see some kind of rally out there. Just simply working off that oversold condition. And we take a look at spot fix index. We can see that it is trading below that uh, Bollinger Band, that upper Bollinger Band at 3134. If it can remain below that, then more likely than not, the spot fix will target the 2745 level. And that, too, could go ahead and put uh, some kind of uh, a rally into the market. Uh, if we take a look real, let me see if I get the NQ up here quickly. We looked at the uh, ES Mini, looking for tells out here. Let's see if we can uh, see what the NQ is signaling to us. So I know on its daily time frame, there's an A to B equals CD to the downside. If we get a bullish reversal candle, then okay, off to the races. The race is taking us to 11.755. You've got a nice TD nine count bottom on the five hour chart. That suggests a move up to 11.685. You've got to close above its TD9 count breakdown level on the two-hour chart. That's 11.644.75. If you do that, that's a signal of price moving higher. The 60-minute had a TD9 count top. If price can close above that 11.542 level, that tells you about a further rally to come. So, folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien will take us on home. And I'll be back with you tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Have a wonderful Wednesday. I'll look forward to seeing you on Terrific Thursday. Take care, folks.